Hello and Happy New Year to you all. As we start a new year, I hope that this year will bring you closer to God, that you'll experience him in a deeper, more meaningful way, and that you'll see his hand leading you, that you experience his goodness, his mercy and his love, and through his grace, you will be truly blessed. New Year is traditionally a time for decisions. We decide to be new people. We want to be healthier, happier, or just turn over a new leaf in general. So today, I'm sure the gyms are full. The trainers are out of the cupboard and hitting the pavement. The diet books are being consulted. New devotionals are being opened as millions of New Year's resolutions are being made. But don't worry, the gym will probably be empty next week, the runners will probably quit, and the books will gather dust. Sorry, I'm not meaning to put a downer on our new year, but the sooner we realise that change doesn't come from inside ourselves, that we can't fix ourselves, that in order to change we need divine intervention, the sooner we realise that the better. But having said all that, we are faced every day with an important decision. That is the most important decision. So today, as we continue our look through the book of Matthew, we're going to look at the tale of two kings. And we're going to be reminded of choices, choices that we have to make. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the king who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and he learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him... Bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they'd heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they'd seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child and Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. A tale of two kings. Yes, no, I know, as I'm saying this, some of you are shouting at the screen and you're saying, Andrew, don't you know there are three kings? How can you forget? There's even a song about them. Well, actually, Matthew doesn't tell us how many there were. Just that they gave at least three gifts. And they're not really kings either, or even wise men. Probably the best translation is astrologer. But anyway, these aren't the two kings that I want to focus on today. They may help drive the story, they teach us a good lesson, but they're not the two kings. The two kings are Herod the Great and the baby Jesus. Matthew is introducing a theme into his gospel. Now this is not a new theme, it runs throughout the Old Testament and it continues all the way to the end of the Bible in Revelation. It's the idea of a conflict between two kingdoms. Here, the kingdom of God and the empire of Rome. 
But throughout scripture, we see this conflict between God's people, God's kingdom, and the pagan nations, be that Egypt, the Philistines, Assyria, Babylon, or Rome. And this conflict can be political, it can be physical, and it can also be spiritual. The Bible is full of stories of this physical, this political conflict, from slavery in Egypt to the uh, marauding neighbours, to the exile, to the Roman Empire. God's people were persecuted uh, by um, the nations and the pagan governments around them. Matthew knows that the Roman Empire and the early church are going to be in opposition to each other. So he sees the start of that here in this story with the Roman client king and the baby Jesus. But we know that this physical conflict mirrors the great conflict. The great controversy between God and the devil. Books like Daniel and Revelation remind us that behind earthly powers lies the great accuser, Satan, the devil. And he tries to thwart the kingdom of God. So this tale of two kings is not just a history lesson to be found in Matthew. It's a challenge for every one of us. Which king will we swear allegiance to? Jesus or whatever client king claims the political and spiritual power of empire? So let's just compare these two kings. Herod I was also known as Herod the Great. And this isn't simple hyperbole. The Roman Senate gave him the title King of Judea and he ruled fully as a king. He embarked on a massive infrastructure program. He rebuilt and enlarged the temple, including doubling the size of the temple platform on the mount. He used the latest material to construct a massive new harbour at Caesarea Maritime. And he built fortresses including Masada and Herodium. This was funded by a complex but well-managed taxation scheme. He was also a violent despot. He had a well-established secret police that kept dissent down. He had a bodyguard of 2,000 soldiers and he wasn't afraid of using force to protect or further his interests. The other king was not sitting on a throne. The other king was found in a cradle. Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the Son of God, the Creator of the universe, the one who told both wind and waves to be still, the one who will return one day at the head of an army of angels, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He replaced the temple with his sacrifice. He established the church and built it on his foundation. His followers turned the world upside down. He gave up everything to give those with nothing life. One of the kings, Herod, would kill innocent ones in order to save himself. The other, Jesus, was killed whilst innocent to save us. One of the kings, Herod, used violence and power to stay in charge of a nation. The other, Jesus, gave up his place at the side of God to create a new nation. One was called the King of Judea. The other, died on a cross under a sign calling him the King of the Jews. This is indeed the tale of two very different kings. Jesus himself said this in Matthew 6, No one can serve two masters, for the slave will either hate the one and love the other, or will be devoted to one and despise the other. Which king will you serve? A little later in chapter 2, Matthew shows us the magnitude of Herod's inhumanity.
When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years or under, according to the time he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeps for her children. She refused to be consoled because there were no more. Now there's no way around this story. This is a horrid story. This is a story that demonstrates the lengths a brutal dictator will go to in order to cling to power. It's uncomfortable reading. It's uncomfortable the week after Christmas. It's uncomfortable in the chapter after Jesus' birth. We want to avoid it. But that would be a mistake. It's a reminder of the horrors of sin. Sometimes we don't take sin and its consequences seriously enough until we come face to face with it. This is a tragic story, but sometimes we need to be shocked out of our complacency. It's also a reminder that even in times of joy, for example, this Christmas season, there is sorrow. This Christmas season, I know of families separated by illness. I know families suffering trauma. I know of families living with and facing grief. I know people who are facing death. Because of sin, in this world, even in times of joy, we are tinged with sorrow and sadness. And Matthew acknowledges this. So today, if you are filled not with comfort and joy, but with sorrow and sadness, you too are part of God's story. We love you. God loves you. We pray for you. And we sit with you through these times. I started by reminding you of the decisions we often make in New Year. But the biggest life choice you have to make is this. Which of these two kings will you serve? Which of these kingdoms will you swear allegiance to? Because as the gospel singer Bob Dylan once sang, you're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Only one of these kingdoms will last. Only one of these kingdoms will stand the test of time. Only one of these kings can offer you salvation. I mean, one of them will sacrifice you if necessary, but only the sacrifice of Jesus saves. The choice is ultimately between salvation or condemnation. Your decisions matter, not just for your future, but also for your today. Because who you choose as your king affects how you live as a citizen. If Herod is your king, then violence, power, corruption and intimidation will all be acceptable ways to live your life. But if Jesus is your king, then your life will be one of self-sacrificial love, putting the, other, putting the needs of others First, your choice of king matters on earth as it does in heaven. Before we finish, let's circle back to the Magi, the eastern visitors that set up the conflict between the two kings. They were pagan astrologers. They weren't Jewish. They came from outside the borders of the Roman Empire. Yet they are amongst the first, amongst the first people to recognise who Jesus is. They were searching for something. And I don't just mean browsing or scrolling, I mean searching. They noticed a star and then they followed it. They didn't know where the journey was going to take them. They stopped and asked for directions. They sought out advice from those who would have known. Those magi, they wanted something and they would do all that they could do to find it. They also listened and obeyed. They sought advice and they followed it. They listened to the dream that God sent them. They did as he told them. I just want to make two quick points here. God is not just for you 
and me for the church and maybe just a few invited guests. God wants everyone to know him, even the pagan astrologers. So, don't you dare put barriers to keep the seekers out. Welcome the seekers. Help them in their search. Answer their questions. Point them in the right direction. Today, just as at the birth of Jesus, God's kingdom is bigger than you or I can even dare to imagine. Secondly, if they did all that they could to find the baby in a manger, if they did all that they could to go and worship the infant king, then what possible excuse do you have? What's stopping you? You don't need to search the heavens for a star to follow. You don't need to cross the desert to an unknown uh, quest. You don't have to ask kings and governors for help. You don't have to ask priests and theologians to guide you. You don't even need gold, frankincense and myrrh. Which of the two kings are you going to follow today? What's stopping you from worshipping the Son of God, Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the One who saves you from your sins, the One who accepts you as you are, the One who changes you? If the Magi recognised Him, why can't you? Matthew finishes his account of the birth of Jesus by introducing us to the tale of two kings. He lays out the importance of deciding who you will serve. The kingdom of this world or God's kingdom. He shows the terrible cost of worldly, sinful, kingly power. And he shows that it's possible to want more, to seek a true king and to find and worship Jesus. So this new year, forget about the diet, the exercise plan, the music instrument you're going to learn, whatever change you are planning, because ultimately, unless you choose the right king, he'll make no difference to your life. If you want your life to matter, you need the right king. If you want your life to have meaning, you need to have the right king. If you want to find salvation, you need to find the right king. So please, today, choose Jesus and spend this year learning more about him for the book of Matthew. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus as your king and become a citizen of the kingdom of God. May God help you to hear the call of Christ the King. May you follow in the service of his kingdom that has no end. May he reign with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. Amen.